this is good. Recording in progress. Good evening. Call to order the Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. City of Franklin Community the Whole Meeting. It is now 6.30 p.m. Madam Clerk, please take the roll. Mayor Nelson. Here. Alderman Hofer. Here. Alderwoman Eichmann. Here. Alderman Hassan is excused. Alderwoman Day. Here. Alderman Barber. Aye. Alderman Craig is excused. Please rise for the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Uh, going on to item B, Rock Ballpark Commons Noise Related Updates, the Rock Sports Complex Sound Study Report prepared by, prepared by and for Milwaukee County. Um, Adam, Director of Administration, do you want to start the steering? No? Okay, you don't have to. We don't make motions, do we? No, I don't. I mean, from the prior meeting. Like, I can't remember who. It's all right. Yeah. I mean, made the motion to bring the committee as a whole to discuss. But, Good night. Uh, I think it would be appropriate. I can start. Yeah, I believe it was Alderman. I believe it was Alderman Barber and Alderman Holfer. Holfer and I seconded it, and then we added the the. Uh, where we'd go into a special session, uh, committee of the whole. Uh, that's fine, Alderman Barber. If you'd like to start, I know we all probably have things. Uh, we all have points. things. I hope. Um, just to kind of start us off on where I think we're at is we've got some conflicting um, <clears throat> things that have to be resolved in terms of the UDO says it's a different set of numbers than the uh, actual ordinance, and the ordinance was what was quoted in the study, but the UDO has numbers out there that have to be reconciled. So my biggest thing is reconciling those numbers and then us deciding what numbers we want to and then amending do, do the appropriate amendments to that. Then once we have that in place and we know what we're comfortable with, we can determine whether we want it to be a floating number or whether we want it to be a, 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 dy a dynamic versus static kind of a thing there. So um, that's one of the aspects of this that I would like to see. Then I'd like to see us talk about, and I don't think it's, it's just one meeting, but I think the next thing I'd like to see us talk about is the monitoring and what goes on with that. And uh, made the placement of it, just make sure everybody's on the same page with the placement of it and who's gonna be monitoring and who's gonna be doing what reporting with that. So that's like the third thing. And then the fourth thing is like what happens if there's violations? How are they going to be corrected? So I have kind of like different topics that I'm concerned about and would like us to talk about along the way and maybe get some definition of it as we move forward. And then finally going in and doing a change to the uh, Ballpark Commons PDD that will reflect what our current thinking is and what our decisions are or what we'd like to see happen. Because it's always been out there and we've never really talked about what do we want to see. It's always been an argument, well, this number is this number. Well, I think it's up to the council to decide what the number they want it to be and go from there. So what best meets the needs of the ballpark and the, the citizens and how we work from there to come back and say, okay, this is what we'd like to see, how the PDD, because according to some people, that PDD is open, subject to the uh, fact that we had, uh, there's a cause in there referencing the sound study. Well, the sound study is where we're at right now. So that's kind of where I'm at. And if anybody else has any, I don't would I, would, is it okay if I respond to a couple of those items? I have a few questions on Mike's okay. thing too. Okay. Go ahead. Um, in regards to the sound study in particular, didn't take into consideration our UDO, so I want that to be noted. Um, and then as part of our UDO rewrite and the council's approval, we have added the noise ordinance to be um, a portion that we look at. So we will take the, the conversation, the takeaways from this meeting 
to that meeting, we have a meeting scheduled with the Hawthorne representative and our UDO consultants and staff. And so we'll meet and then we'll bring it to the task force and plan commission. So I just wanted to let everybody know, lay it out that um, those steps are already in the process. And that, that's wonderful, but I, I, we have to come up with the council's conclusion right. as to what we want that number to be across all mm -hmm. venues, whether it be the license committee, whether it be the UDO, whether it be the ordinance in the city, um, or the ballpark. So. Right. I think um, one of the things that it is important to consider is that there is documentation that states that PDD 37 is required or it's zoned as a P1 for parks and the zoning and um, noise ordinance for that is 55, I think, 55 decibels. And so only with permits should it go beyond that. I'm, I'm happy with the 55 if that's going to be our, our baseline. Hmm. So that would be something that I think everyone can live with. I'm not sure what the committee is when you're talking mm -hmm. to citizens, but that would be my feeling as well. Yeah, I, I just wanted to let you know that that's the actual number, that's the zoning that's in the PDD. So that's what I, you know, part of looking at the permitting process, part of looking at our noise ordinances was to look at where we are starting and what is already in place. And so that would be the process, it would be the Park one um, zoning at 55 decibels is the max, and then the permitted events can go up to, I believe, 79 decibels. Uh, but that is a permitted and approved by permit. And council. Right. That's, okay. yeah. Ultimately, it's always a council <laughs> deciding. Um, and thank you. I was implying it. I didn't say it. But yes, uh, absolutely. I, I'm filling in the blanks. Right. So, Alderman and Barbara, one of the points that I think uh, you and I share, but if you want to give a little more insight, when you talk about the floating level, uh, could you kind of expound on that a little bit? Well, my understanding is that there's different options as we can set a fixed number, and that would be the uh, not to exceed this number, or else we can come up with a more dynamic approach to it, which says uh, this kind of an event or if they're going to have fireworks, it has to be ended by this time so that it's not disrupting the neighborhoods and the neighbors, and it only lasts for 10. So there's, there's some ways to go to accommodate things mm -hmm. and make it more livable for the, the residents that have always come forward at this point. So that's my feeling of it. Um, I'd like to see what the flexibility is that we can come up with. And if that's what the licensing committee then is going to use to have um, as their <coughs> guideline, I think that would be very valid at that point to make sure. And then as you apply for special events, you are aware that there are limits. And if you get beyond that, then what might be a penalty that would be, you know, imposed upon that. Right. Or the denial of future events, too. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of options. I guess it just comes down to what the, the council wants. But the Corey Monitor Committee has a violation specific amount, mm -hmm. but that was discovered or put in place how many years ago, and it's only a hundred dollars per violation for a quarry event if they mm -hmm. exceed the, what the limits are. So I'm just wondering if we want to put something like that in the in place too, as well, where there's a monetary penalty, as well as making sure that it uh, everybody understands what the event is and what the limits are. Uh, yes, and one of the, a few other points to this was we when we've met and we talked in this in the in the work group a little more about how this gets enforced and what it is and what it isn't and uh, and it's on its face what it would be if there's a, a noise complaint that comes in to the PD uh, there's you know these. The, the entire monitoring system, once it's all transitioned to us, set up on our website, make sure everything is set with the PD, at the PD that they can see it in real time, and also has the annual calibration on there, then when that complaint comes in, they see where it is and they can verify the time. And the police department enforces this 
not a complaint to the plan commission right. where unfortunately things have, you know, it's just, hold on everybody. So okay. as, as to how that enforcement arm goes as a normal complaint would be handled in other jurisdictions when the police are called for police to take action. And that monetary amount uh, that we were talking with, there's, there's, it ranges, you know, there, there's a range in there. Uh, it just has to be, you know, could this be a range of a first? Because if you're the PD, you know, issuing this fine amount, then who does the fine go to? You know, is it the person that's perhaps the, 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 you know, the manager, is it go to the owners? How does this work? Because uh, it's got to go to a person, uh, not just the group. It's got to go, it's not going to be, um, you know, owner, not operator, because somebody, it's somebody is making a conscious decision when these events go on as to what the sound level is going to be. Somebody is doing that. I don't believe AI is in this yet. That was to lighten up the mood, but it didn't work. So, but we'll, 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 we'll figure that out when we get to that part, but there will have, there has to be personal accountability. Madam Director of Administration. Would it be appropriate to ask the chief if you'd like to sit at this table? I know that part of our conversation this afternoon during our department head meeting was the enforcement piece of this. Sure, Chief, would you like to run up here? Uh, Alderman Eichmann. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to also mention, but it was touched base on, that a permitted event, such as an extraordinary event, can have up to 79 decibels by permit only. Um, that's not how it's currently being applied, but that's how I read. I also wanted to not just start on a negative note, but I was a little surprised of the $200,000 taxpayer county study of the amount of inaccuracy that's within here. For example, page 31, otherwise there are no county, state, or federal noise standards applicable to the rock. I believe that's wrong. The county does have standards. Um, there is a, somewhere in here, there's mentioned several times an area in Greendale on Parkview that it's north of the rack, that's in Greendale, it's south of the rack. I am also wondering for the sound modeling results, there's addresses on here, such as the address I reside at, and I spoke with um, all of the, pretty much all of the neighbors near me. We weren't aware of any sound modeling results, no one was notified. So I'm just wondering where that data comes from. Uh, could I ask all, all the women if, if when you're referencing, I know I got the first part was on page 31, Yes. And if uh, you go through these things one at a time, and if we could find them, because I'd like to definitely mark them uh, for, for follow-up, if you don't mind. I mean, you've done some great work. I just want to make sure that we're all on that. I, well, yes, on page 31, it's um, the second paragraph, the end of the second paragraph. And then I'll have to find where it mentions Parkview or Parkway Lane. Sure. Um, I just, I'm sorry, I just saw it, it was highlighted over there. I thought maybe you just had that part highlighted. Yeah, that part of Greendale, I don't. There was just, there was so many inaccuracies. We'd be here quite a bit if I went through each and every one, but definitely the sound modeling results, these addresses aren't correct on here. There is no sound, sound modeling done in my yard or my neighbor's yards. What so page? I'm just wondering why they're listed on what here. What page is that? Well, <clears throat> as far as the addresses? is a few examples, the 8731 West Rawson, which is 8731-8733. Is there a page number then all over? That would be page number 240. And page 242, 8631 West Rawson. That, there is no cell monitoring there. Those are three examples. Which so I'm just wondering, why these addresses are all listed if this is the area that the noise travels to. These addresses to note are on the south side of Rawson, not on the north side of Rawson where residents' backyards abut towards the rock. So I just wanted to make a note of that. I thought that was interesting, especially since I reside at one of the addresses. I'm sorry, so, would you do the addresses again that you read? 8731, which is actually 8731 and 8733, it's a duplex. And 8631 West Rawson. And what page is 8631? 242. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. So I'm wondering how many of these other addresses are also wrong. I didn't, time didn't allow for me to go knock on everyone's doors and call everyone. 
Uh, Chief, do you, we have an, uh, an extra packet if you'd like to reference. And also mentioned too, the UDO is not at all referenced. They're calling things ordinances versus a PDD. I don't have those exact page numbers right at this moment. If I come across them again, I will mention. I didn't want to sit here and critique the whole sound study, but I just wanted to add that I was quite surprised by the inaccuracy of a lot of it. I'm not sure where the data came from that was given to them or to the county or. But with that, for right now, I will yield. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Day. Thank you. Um, so just a few um, just generic comments um, that I wanted to make, echoing a lot of what Alderman Barber already said. Um, uh, I I concur with his you know three main points of, of areas that we um, as as a council and as staff should be um, should be interested in looking at. Um, also agree um, with with comments that have been made that. Um, the, the majority of our our UDO and, and Franklin specific um, ordinances um, are, are not within this document. So while it is a good companion document to look at while we're looking at the bigger picture of, of the issue going on, I don't think it's the smoking gun that um, people may have wanted it to be. Um, just for some of the reasons that all the women Eichmann brought up and, and also for not referencing a lot of Franklin specific information within it to be able to compare side by side. But as I said, a companion document to work with um, the other uh, things that we are looking at at the time. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces. And so I wanted to um, thank um, the city administrator and the planning staff for kind of going through and pulling all of those pieces together and looking at them side by side to try to find where the inconsistencies are, are most egregious and kind of starting at that point and, and working forward. Um, so I just want to be on record saying thank you for that. Um, and then I have some more specific things, but I think, you know, for this particular meeting, I don't want to miss the forest for the trees. I think we need to start kind of more broadly. And then once we have some broad concepts nailed down of what we need to work on, then we can get into the details. But I think if we go to the details first, um, that is kind of where we've gotten tripped up in the past and the bigger issues then kind of get swept away. And so I think we need to work big to small on, on this moving forward. Um, and with that, I will yield for now. Sure. Oh, wait, one more, one more thing. Um, at some point, um, I know there are um, a few members in, in the gallery here tonight. At some point tonight, I would like to offer um, for them a chance to speak with their three minutes um, whenever it seems appropriate to um, the body up here. I'd like to make that motion. Not necessarily now, but at, at some point, since there are six individuals here tonight. Um, do you yield? Yes. Uh, Mr. Holfer? Uh, I agree so far with everything that's been said regarding this. My concern is that uh, with the discrepancies that we go through and reconcile all the things so that the that we totally understand what the UDO update is, how that pertains to the PDD or future PDDs, and that um, if we're going to if we're going to take the 55 limit at the receiving district, in theory, that will take care of a lot of this. But we still need to go back and take out the 79s and whether some of that ends up to be a negotiation or not. I don't know, but. I, I want to make sure that everything is in alignment so that some years down the road or when future projects come up, just like a lot of us were not here when this came about, I want it to be crystal clear going forward. Um, one thing I would just ask um, on page six yeah, from our, uh, our resolution 2024-8109, uh, under permitted use and special use, yeah, just I want to make sure that I'm, I'm thinking about this correctly. Item three it says, is stated on current extraordinary entertainment and special event application. Application must be received at least 30 day working days before the event. Do we not have a conversation about different? Yeah, <clears throat> I had said I wanted to move it to 45, but yeah. I didn't have a chance to. That's okay, well, that, that's ordinance. one of the things, though, if that's the direction we're going, it seems we have numerous ordinances where the policies change, but the ordinance never got updated. So I want to make sure that that gets done as well as all of these other things. Um, 
I'm sure we all received numerous communications from residents regarding this issue. Uh, and this late this afternoon, I, I received a, a lengthy text with a bunch of questions. And um, if they can ask those questions tonight, that would be great. If not, I will forward that on tomorrow and ask for a written response uh, to those questions from the appropriate people. So at this point, that's all I have. Uh, Alderman Meichman. Thank you. Uh, stating the 30 working days before the event or if it changes to the 45, I was under the impression when we last talked about this, we were taking out the terminology of working days. Yes, we correct. agreed that we weren't going to do business days because some people work seven days a week, such as the mayor. And that 30, they we're just going to leave it at 30 or 45 days, period, not business, working. You are, you are correct, and I believe it was 45 uh, calendar days, right? Thank you. Good just a point of clarification for that change to the permit process. Um, <clears throat> how do you want that to come back to the council? Do we have to bring it back, or do you want um, Shirley and I to work together and and have it corrected or changed, rather? Not corrected, but changed. Um, I think what would make the most sense, Madam Clerk, chime in if you feel necessary, but I think whatever, given the magnitude of this document and given the uh, uh, high level of importance, I'd like to have the entire council Mm -hmm. uh, be given whatever updates are, even if they're real brief on an item, here's the changes and we move on, just so everybody has a chance to see them. Uh, and if there's any questions, I mean, I don't doubt that it's, it's going to be accurate, but I prefer just that everything, especially as we get closer to this finality, that it just keeps coming back and not necessarily for an action. We had, when we had talked that day, I said I would like to change it to that. I didn't right. say. <clears throat> You know what I mean? But when it makes sense. It. The, the 45 uh, days is simple mm -hmm. to the alderwoman's point with the days, the working days, that gets confusing. This way it's 45 mm -hmm. calendar days, boom, there it is. And it's, it's that way there's time and there's, uh, I think it makes the most sense. It's the most reasonable outcome, I, I believe. So are you asking staff to then rework those ordinances everywhere where it says permits um, are required by 30 working days and change it to 45? And bring that in front of the council. Uh, that's mine, but I would like to see a council members yes. Yes. chime in on this. I agree. Um, yeah. So, Alderman Eichmann, you've got the floor still. The 45 days. You know, I just lost a train of thought of what I was going to say. So, you can skip over me. We'll okay, Mr. Barber. Sorry. No problem, we'll come, Mr. Barber. I agree with uh, Alderwoman Day. Uh, I think that a lot of this has to be, I, I was just raising points that I think we have to eventually come to a conclusion on before we can uh, put the language in. So I agree that a lot of this needs to be talked about. One other point that I wanted to bring up that still has to be a determination or a process to resolve is whether or not it's an averaging number over time or whether it's a static number right now, this is the event, uh, but we can't go back to half hour ago and figure out what came forward to do an average. So. I think we have to talk, talk about that as, an, as, a, as what we want to see happen. And that's one of the things that is still out there on the table. And um, so are you good right yes. now? For right now? Hey, Chief, I'm waiting for Chief. Chief? Was it overtime? Or, or well, no, no, I'm, I was waiting for your presentation. <laughs> but. Yeah. Um, you have to just move it. I hope. Oh, okay. Like, like way close. Oh. That's not on. I don't know why. What's going on with this one? I know we were having like <clears throat> issues, but in, until that, I'll I'll stall for time and I'll start rambling. <laughs> so hold on. And so I, I think one of the things that we've seen with talking about the, the the consistencies or inconsistencies in relation to our current ordinance, I think our current ordinance is pretty clear. And everything kind of we, what we've talked about, even including in our, our work group, was you know the current ordinance, the current ordinance levels, and that was the simplest way to uh, defer to those levels, so you don't have uh, any ambiguity or any questions on that. So, if you want to do a little test, test, test. There Perfect. we go. You've got the floor, Chief. Okay. 
Uh, I'm definitely encouraged what I've heard so far, um, because if we're going to be asked to enforce this, I would like the specifics, um, just that, very specific, what the noise levels are that are acceptable, what are not acceptable, both during permitted events and non-permitted events. Um, and then also, if you've read the sound study like I have, uh, sound over time, are we talking about one specific peak is a violation? Um, and I also wanted to make one point. There's a lot of conversation involving UDO uh, versus municipal code. Um, it's my opinion that the police department enforces municipal code, but not the UDO. So correct, if you guys correct. want something enforced uh, from the police department, I ask that it be um, in the municipal code. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, Right now, um, if I'm coming up with like a tentative plan, I'm looking at enforcement uh, being, again, permitted events versus non-permitted events. A little bit closer. Okay, sorry. I guess I got to swallow this thing. Um, so I'm looking at it two different ways, permitted events versus non-permitted events, because typically in the past, permanent events have had um, a higher decibel limit. Um, so my ask also would be that when a permit is issued, if the permit, sorry, the decibel limit is listed on that permit, so that we have an enforcing officer, it's very clear what the limit is. Um, and then the other big ask I have is that to make sure that those sound monitoring devices are functioning and that we're able to view them, because I think that'll do sort of two purposes. I think it'll reduce complaints if people can clearly see that the noise is under whatever the permitted level is. Um, and conversely, if it's over, we can also see that. And rather than sending out officers multiple times on a given night, uh, we can simply look at the sound monitor. And, and Chief, that's, that's the goal. <clears throat> and we, that's the goal to achieve so there isn't uh, our resources going out there yet we're serving the citizens that live there Correct. in a timely fashion and in an accurate, if I'm the officer writing the citation, I want to say, oh, it was 7.48 p.m. on June 17th, decibel right hit this, blah, 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 and now there's this. So, and we also have to work through, does that one citation, if, if there's a citation issued, is it one for the night or is it one per occurrence? So, you know, let's say, you know, there's a, a concert and, you know, there's, 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 you know, they're playing there. They're really on the level of where they're at, but they keep jumping over. Let's say it's 25 times to the duration of the event. Is it one citation or is it 25 citations? And I think we've got to be realistic and reasonable, but we also have to make it real clear that this is a lie in the sand. It's up to you, event operator to do your sound checks prior, make sure you know where your levels are at, and to not exceed those levels. Alderman Hofer. Um, to that end, all night. We'll be here I, would all like night to, I would like to see if, if we could do like we did with Enchant, where if they have a concert and there is a complaint, that we can address it within a certain time period so that it isn't 25 times that they say, okay, we're aware that there's a complaint, we're turning it down, this is where it's gonna stay. Yeah, you know, like, a, and I agree, Alderman Holfer, with a like a direct point of contact for that event. And I'm now I'm basically I'm I'm focusing now. Let's say there's five concerts, and this is concert number one of the season. And who is in charge on the scene? Who is going to when we start these complaints come in? Once they're verified, so if they get a, if, the MP, if uh, Franklin PD gets a, a complaint, and they're looking at the monitors, they're like, well, you know, I'm sorry, sir, ma'am, who's ever calling right now. We're, we're not, we're not, they're not in violation. And then that's got to be certain. But if they are in violation, then who are we calling? Well, there's got to be a contact name, an actual person that, because I thought Enchant worked very well. I thought uh, that was, that was uh, you know, for the amount of people that flow through there and, and what they did, I thought that made sense. Um, we haven't had an update. Where are we with the monitors and moving and getting it set up online and, Calibrated. I don't know where we're at with that. And well, we're, <laughs> well, we're it's moving at a snail's pace because there's a, there's certain things that are not in our control and certain techno technological challenges that we're trying to get done. But that's we're we're gonna we're gonna have it. 
We're going to have it, but can I give you a timeline? No. Did I think it was going to be done by now? Absolutely. I'd have bet you a can of Coke that it would have been done by now. Ice cold can. May I um, ask Adam Director. for clarity, Alderman Holper, were you referring to a contact or were you referring to the ability to get back together as a council and address issues? No, I'm, I'm talking about a contact. Okay. So when the neighbors have an issue, mm -hmm. it's not, mm -hmm. well, you know, we sent somebody out, we're not sure this, that, that mm -hmm. we have a direct contact that we can affect the change that right. afternoon, evening, whatever it is. Okay, and then I can provide a little bit of an update. Um, in our most recent meeting, was it last, it had to have been last week, um, with the operator, we had determined that they would be addressing the sound monitoring by May 1st, I believe. All right, yes, May 1st. That those should be, the, the monitoring ability should be online for the city to see with the certification of the calibration. Jeez, really, do we have to swallow this thing? <laughs> one, one last point I'd like to ask, or question I'd like to ask. Do we know if um, the operator is going to be in compliance with the county as far as having the, their own sound system for the umbrella bar before we start issuing permits? Well, our point of contact is here. I don't know if you want to invite him up, but what he had told us in that same meeting that I referenced about um, everything going being online by May 1st is that they are going to be rehabbing a um, sound system and that will be the dedicated system at the umbrella bar. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, representatives here does not have to speak, but can perhaps take note and then respond back to Madam Director of Administration if she wishes. Did you wanna say something? I don't have that with me. We're gonna go with Alderwoman Eichmann. Thanks, Mayor. Just for clarification, I wanted to go back to that 45 days of receiving permits before an event. When will that go to an effect? Obviously, we have all seen the numerous amount of permits that have come through for the RAC, fireworks, um, several extraordinary events, and so forth. So that those that have been turned in then would be excluded from the 45-day mark, obviously, because they weren't aware of that 45 days. We can't go back and retract that. I wanted to mention that. Also, I wanted to mention I am concerned about the amount of time the Franklin Police Department's going to be spending on this. And I want to ask the chief if he feels that a nights of um, extraordinary events, that extra patrol cars and officers will have to be available for noise complaints. Will the taxpayers be paying money then for overtime for all the noise complaints that come in? I think it's going to really depend on if those monitors are functioning or not. Uh, if the monitors are functioning, again, my goal or my hope would be that the residents can call, I'm sorry, they can look on the website and see themselves whether in fact what's going on is or is not a violation. Um, and if it is a violation, uh, they can give us a call. We can verify that and take care of it. Um, and if it's a situation where it's um, one violation per night, if that's what you decide, um, that would not be a drain on resources. But uh, conversely, if those monitors are not up and running, um, before the first game, I expect probably noise complaints, and then that would be labor intensive um, because our only alternative would be sending an officer out. Um, and especially if you determine that the violation is noise over time, um, our officers are not sound experts. They can easily sit there with a sound monitor and determine what a peak is over a period of time. But again, we're not sound experts. Um, so it's imperative, I believe that the cell monitors are functioning and visible so people can see what's actually occurring. Thank you, Chief. I also wanted to add the amount of calls that would be coming into dispatch. You know, neighbors may not communicate, nor do I expect them to, but if you receive several calls, the music is loud, and understandably, for example, Hawthorne Lane, I'll use since there's many residents here from Hawthorne this evening, and dispatch receives five, six calls right in a row. You know, I just don't want that, that it's important and I have empathy for the neighbors with the noise. However, I also don't want it to take away if somebody has a serious medical emergency or something is happening in another part of the city and dispatch is overwhelmed with calls because the music at the umbrella bar is up a notch or too louder than it should be. 
certainly, obviously, uh, dispatchers always prioritize the calls, um, and a noise complaint would definitely fall below some of the things that you mentioned. Um, but I'm hoping over time, as people learn that these monitors are uh, functioning and available, that those calls will hopefully drop off. Mm -hmm. Um, but that would be my expectation, at least at this point. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate that. Sure. Mayor, I just wanted to add, and then I'll yield. Once the monitors are up and working, is it possible to have a special committee of the whole meeting to go over that and explain how they're used and so forth to reference and invite the neighbors that are affected by the sound? You'd, I don't need a direct answer on that right now, but I just well, wanted to mention that might, you know, it may be a helpful tool to walk everyone through it. You know, not everyone may be as computer savvy as others and so forth. And just to kind of direct, maybe it doesn't even have to be a committee of the whole. It could just be some right. type of meeting at the library, neighborhood meeting, or, and again, I don't need an answer on that right now, just a thought. But with that, I'll yield. Thank you. So given the pretty aggressive timeline as the time is shrinking till the May 10th first pitch and the May 1st goal of having this, this monitoring system up, what was our fear or an early fall has kind of come to fruition is now we're in <clears throat> April and when things aren't to where we were hoping they would be. They're going down the right pathway, but to your point, you know, we, we'd like to have something up on a special meeting or something, but we would also put out communication blasts as to when this is done and up and, and, and ready to, to be worked on. And we'll make sure that this is real, uh, it'll be real user friendly I'll be the personal test for that. More humor, but no, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I think once that is done, and once we have also neighborhood input, uh, as far as giving it a, a shot, you know, we can tweak whatever. We've got an extremely talented uh, IT area that can handle this, um, Madam Director, administration. I just okay. wanted to um, make a note. City Attorney had provided me with a copy of a document that I actually provided in our um, last Common Council session. And it essentially states a summary of everything that the um, developer is doing and where they are at the moment. And they have been um, working with us to ensure that permitting is, is done appropriately per our ordinances and um, getting that information in as early as possible. And they are, there is a um, expressed desire to work with the city to address all these matters. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, I would concur that the gentleman that we're dealing with is, uh, um, has been excellent. I don't wanna call him up by name unless he wants me to, but he's been uh, wonderful and very straightforward and very accessible. So I can't say enough good things about uh, how that's been moving forward. I didn't see that, so. Um, I just wanted to thank you, City Administrator, for putting together the summary for us. It was a very resourceful tool and going through everything for tonight's meeting. Thank you. That, that is all on the operator that is here tonight thank that you. I will not mention by name. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alderwoman Day. Thanks. Uh, yeah, this document is, is helpful with, um, with the timeline. Um, the one thing um, that I wanted to uh, just get some clarity on um, within here as well, uh, when we talk about the, the sound monitors, the actual devices themselves and where they're placed, I know that uh, we had walked uh, in the fall and looked for um, the optimal uh, place to, to put those to make sure that they are um, monitoring the sound at, at, at the correct level, um, especially the one um, on the north side of the property, um, whether it's, you know, on the hill, below the hill, making sure that we're, we're monitoring sound appropriately. Um, part of the sound study recommended this, and I know um, it's been brought up by, um, by residents as well and, and staff, um, was the idea of bringing in um, kind of a neutral third party to, to look at those sites to make sure that they generally are the best location uh, for monitoring that particular type of sound. Like I said, to make sure it's at the right elevation level, pointed in the correct direction, so that we are doing a, the best due diligence for both the operator and um, the residents that live in the surrounding neighborhood to make sure we're capturing that. So I don't know if we're still planning to do that, if that has happened or not. Um, I, th I strongly encourage that to happen if we have the time and, and the, the funds to be able to do that. So um, just to address that, is the person that is um, a representative of the, the group that's here tonight had received, and we had also discussed in our last meeting, 
a document from me regarding outstanding obligations. And that is an outstanding obligation. And I did copy from the ordinance um, 2019-2368, pages 45 or 44 to 45, section three, conditions of approval, section two, with the final report to be shared with the city. And so section two essentially states that in regard to any newer revised concerts, live music venues or outdoor events, utilizing speakers, including but not limited to the proposed baseball stadium, the applicants have agreed to implement the sound enhancements as set forth in the BPC County, County Lands LLC agreement with Milwaukee County set forth in exhibit C addendum of that agreement. The applicants have also agreed to comply with the city of Franklin's noise ordinances as they relate to the standard of 79 decibels at the property boundary. Obviously that is not accurate. Um, the applicant shall also provide a report to the plan commission after one year from the date of occupancy permit of the new stadium to review the results of the noise monitoring. So this is one of the outstanding obligations that the, the city would like to hold the applicant to. Um, I realize that we are way past that, that one year time frame, but I still think it's appropriate. And the representative of um, that organization had also um, agreed, if you will, to, to providing us with that. Okay. Still got the floor, ma'am. Yeah, um, just a couple more quick things. Sure. Um, then um, for, um, I yeah, know you had mentioned this a little bit with regard to um, the the UDO rewrite and, and the sound monitoring and having a, a neighborhood representative be a part of that. Um, I notice in here as well, we, they talk about um, the, the speakers for the umbrella bar, which I'm happy to see um, that that is uh, being put in place. Um, and they also mention um, having a representative um, to walk once that is, yeah, once <laughs> once that it's, um, oh, there's no page number, sorry, it's under the stadium um, okay. section. Um, much, it, it reminds me a lot of what they did for Enchant, and I think that worked really, really well, um, having um, individuals from that neighborhood to kind of see and listen to what it's gonna sound like um, and, and get their input. And as Alderman Holtfer said, um, I think by and large Enchant was a success because of that partnership that, that they created with the, um, with the residents, so I'm glad to see that that is continuing for, for this and hope that it does continue um, as we get closer to the start of all of these events. Um, and then finally, um, for um, some of the <clears throat> information that um, the chief had mentioned for, um, for the, the special event permits, um, I know that um, obviously we have a bunch in front of us now that we can't you know, go back and change, um, but I would like, um, at, at some point in all the spare time that, that the clerk's office and the city administrator have um, to perhaps look at that, um, our, our permit and see if we can add those two um, line items for um, a decibel level so that it can be clearly noted on there for enforcement purposes. And then um, a point of contact for the event, not just a point of contact for the person who is submitting the application, but a real time um, point of contact for concerns or things that happen real time that police or city officials or or residents can can contact. Uh, Alderman Barber, um, as far as the licensing goes, I, I think we can approve licensing and then add amendments to that that would reflect some of the, the current thought. So it's not as if it's we just have to accept the uh, license as being what the, we can amend it before we approve it. Yeah, so meaning I didn't want them to have to re reapply. Right, so um, we, we, are, we have the ability to amend. Right, um, yeah. At this point, I'd, I'd like to suspend the rules like you mentioned earlier and uh, allow citizens to comment briefly about what their thoughts are so far, what they're hearing. Um, I'd kind of limit it to one go around and try to keep it within the three minutes for whoever wants to speak. So um, I make a motion to- Second that. So we have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I have a motion carries. So we will then uh, now open this up to the three minute rule. I will ask the city engineer to be the time counter. If you wish to come up, please approach the podium. Uh, we'll make sure that that microphone's working. State your name and address for the record. Oh, she's gonna test it out. Yeah, 
And again, uh, we just asked to speak to keep to the three minute rule. We are all hyper, hyper aware of the concerns that have been expressed uh, over time. Good evening. Uh, I'm John Pleva, 8640 West Hawthorne Lane. Um, I think that uh, some of those uh, monitors that we have out there probably need to be repositioned and put into a couple of different spots. Um, like you said, it was a great point. Um, you know, we have an area representative that we could walk through and just make sense of this, you know. I mean, it's been a long time we've been dealing with this, and it's it's borderline ridiculous at this point. Um, however, um, I think that would make sense. Um, uh, also, kind of piggybacking on what the chief was saying, um, if, uh, if they're getting noise violations, you know, instead of trying to be there and and do that, if you have that monitor and you can monitor that and it's gone up and broken the barrier X amount of times, that could be the amount of times that you give them a ticket if you're going to get your point across to somebody. And then the person that you would be giving that ticket to would be the person that pulled the permit. And that would be your point of reference. I think that makes the most amount of sense. At least it makes sense to me. You know, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pooh. Good evening. Good evening. Dale Kerner, 8630 West Hawthorne Lane. You are the governing body of Franklin. This has been going on for 10 years, and you guys keep talking in circles and circles and circles. How loud is too loud? Too loud is when I'm bothering my neighbor any time at night. Did you guys uh, wake up last night at 11.15 hearing a pounding noise in your backyard? I did. Naomi heard it. Mr. Plebel heard it. I called the police department. I know they're busy. Um, they got better things to do, and uh, the dispatcher said, hey, we're, we're busy right now. There was a big accident on 76th and uh, Ross in that area there. Why was this going on at 11.15 last night? And it wasn't, it wasn't like John and I were thinking in the beginning for the first few minutes, is it a kid running by with a car? It was a bump, a bump, a bump. You know me, you agree? Yep. It went on for like a half hour for no reason at all. Someone was trying to try something. Um, you know, that uh, behind our house, there was supposed to be an eight-foot berm. Uh, Mr. Picar uh, told me in August of last year that was going to be, no, it's going to be done by August, the berm. Nobody's touched anything in that backyard yet. And that was already agreed upon before uh, the Rock expanded their parking lot. Um, this has been a residential area. I've been there since 95. Naomi's been there since, what, the late 70s? Mid-70s. Mr. Plubb has probably been there plus 20 years. This was a residential area to begin with. All we're asking for is the same uh, courtesy that's allowed to the rest of the Franklin people. I don't want noise in my backyard. Thank you. Good evening, Supervisor Patty Logston, representing representing District 9, 12100 West Belmar Drive, Franklin. Um, first of all, I appreciate the City of Franklin holding this committee of a whole to discuss the sound study that was conducted by RGA per Milwaukee County's request. I am the co-sponsor of the resolution that requested this. I want to express that the sound study was not executed as per the contract. I am disappointed that the ROC did not follow Milwaukee County's resolution request. Specifically, the ROC prohibited RGA from being on their property and setting up their sound study equipment to properly conduct the sound study. Also, please note that the noise levels are averaged on the report, which prevents showing the actual violations and when they took place. As much as I appreciate you being here, I have great concerns. There are maybe uh, if you go from May to September, you know, 20 weekends through the summer. If you get special permits requesting 79 decibels, every weekend you're gonna be having loud music and, and et cetera. You can, most communities that I've called, 
request one or two fireworks requests for the whole year. City of Franklin, The Rock, I understand there's like 10 requests. It's not, if you keep getting special permits, we're not going to alleviate the problem. We cannot give all these permits to increase it to 79 decibels for a sp specific concert. And, as, and with the, 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 the um, venues that create all the noise. If you're going to keep giving permits, it's, we're going to still have the noise. And we're not going to solve the problem. We need to keep a certain decibel. We need to watch and monitor how many permits that are going out. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Andy Clay, 6025 Parkview Road, Greendale. Um, so I'm glad that you recently made the resolution to follow the existing laws on the noise. Um, that's a good first step. And that you're finally reviewing the sound study tonight. However, you know, the summer is approaching quickly, and I know the Rock is applying for all sorts of events for the summer concert series, tacos and tequila, uh, fireworks, and all the baseball games. And I'm concerned that there will be no meaningful changes that will happen um, prior to all this stuff taking event. And we've been putting up with this for 10 years already. Um, so I hope there is a concrete plan coming soon that will assure the residents that the noise is not going to leave their property above that 45 to 50 decibels as what the guidelines or the laws say in Franklin, and that there's going to be accountability to hold people that, not just with the developer, but also within the city of Franklin that we're following those as well. Um, and then one thing, too, just touch on based on some of the things you were saying, um, Michelle, um, the addresses in that report are not inaccurate. Those are the different locations that the sound study company, RSG, went to to take sound readings from. That's why they're all over the place. I actually live on Parkview Road, which is north in Greendale. It is north of the Rock. So that's my neighborhood, and, and we do get a lot of sound issues, especially with the summer concert series there. So they did come into our neighborhood and do sound readings. The only reason they didn't take anything within the property is because the property, the, the Rock, didn't allow RSG to come onto their property to take actual readings, which would have helped you guys with sound monitor placements, all that stuff. They would have, you would have had all the answers right in front of you tonight had they allowed them to come on the property and take these readings. So it's, again, disappointing that they weren't working with you, but... I'm hoping that we can find a resolution with these sound monitors to get them in the proper locations and that we just don't guess to say, well, we think it'll be great here. It would have been great to have some actual data behind that to say this is where the problems are on the property and this is where it should go. So thank you. Sure. Um, uh, Mr. Kleist, can I just ask you a question? Yeah. If you don't mind, thank you. It would be helpful. I appreciate your time. The addresses that are listed there, one that I reside at and my neighbors that I spoke with, None of us saw anything, received anything for the sound monitoring. Can you explain how is it done? Were they pulled they, they around the side they, they wouldn't have contacted the neighborhood and said, hey, we're coming to your neighborhood to do sounds. They would have contacted you individually. They didn't contact they any of us. So, so do you think maybe they, like, would they have pulled over on the side of Rockton yeah, in the car? they would have pulled over to, on is the side a, of the road and just done monitoring, yeah. That way? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate sure. that. Thank you, Mr. Kleist. Kristen Wilhelm, 3851 West College Avenue. And I took quite a few notes because I was listening on the way here. But first of all, I'd like to say um, the huge missed opportunity in this whole thing was not having the sound study done. And that happened at a plan commission and then was further pushed forward at the Common Council on the night of my birthday, which I, would, I wasn't there. And I would have asked questions on that. I'm not sure why that was removed. Um, but if you look at uh, the PDD in 8A, that condition is not completely removed for the sound study. But yet the county ended up paying for that. And then um, I heard the director of administration read the section about the 79 decibels. And I would like everybody to finally get this 79 decibels, as Mr. Hoffler said. Um, it says as it relates to the ordinances not that it's set at 79. So everyone that's been reading this document keeps skipping over that word as it relates. It's never been 79. Mr. Deedle did a really good job tying the hands of that 79 moving forward by putting that little piece in there when he, because he was at the plan commission. He didn't seem very happy. Nobody took his advice. He didn't end up going to the council meeting. It was a different staff member at the council meeting when all this happened years ago. So um, 
the um, owner operator, as far as the person who owns the land, um, has to sign off on the permit application as well as the person. So if you're going to get a fine and the person who owns the land is also signing, maybe there's a double hit there. You have conditional permits, and this is a great opportunity. One, you get less weekday events, because that's when the kids are sleeping, um, and the parents. Less um, on the do less known loud events. We all know which ones those are. You can cut the hours down for so they end at a more reasonable time. Hills Have Eyes has been going to 1 o'clock in the morning at times by the time they get everyone through. That's pretty late. I don't know anyone who lets them except for a bar. Um, Do you mind put, pulling it a little bit too closer towards you? And then um, per the codes and uh, former Chief Rick Oliva, he said, yes, put some conditions in the permits. And that's going to really drastically help you. Um, then as far as UDO changes and codes, if you have a UDO, we were talking earlier about um, we're going to change 45 days, we're going to change. If that's on the permit, it's one thing. But if it's in the municipal code of the UDO, the council should be voting on that. You should be bringing those <coughs> things forward. That's the legislative body's um, job. And feel free, any of the legislators, to bring in the changes that you think you need to help us out. It's three minutes, man. Um, okay, I just have a No, you're good, but I'm just giving um, you three minutes. Okay. And then um, over the years, I have seen a lot of laws change that are in the books by verbal or direction and not the council vote. And that has caused a lot of the problems. I've seen the letters go out directing at 79 decibels. I've seen things that we as a council never, never got to vote on. That was one of my most frustrating things that happened when I was sitting up there and took a lot of heat when I tried to bring them up. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Good evening. Dang it. We say our address again, like usual, or are we good to go? N name and address. Okay, Bernie Caran, 6928 South 90th Street. Nice to see you all. Um, and I didn't know there were going to be public comments, but since I'm here, um, I know Mayor Nelson and I talked about like communities that have stadiums and residential neighborhoods, <coughs> and they seem to make it work. What's the difference? Well, from the get go, they had sound engineers come in and say, hey, this is the way the speakers in a stadium should be placed. By the way, we were promised that. I was there at meetings when we were promised that with this stadium. And then they, they take careful look at what is the sound at the boundary of the property. Look at a condom walk. There's businesses around it. They have better protections than we do as residents and families with kids. Um, so I want you to keep that in mind. And that the taxpayers, in fact, kind of did pay for that with this sound study last summer, but then again, weren't allowed on the property, um, which is shocking. And it should be egregious to every taxpayer because we paid for that to be done. Let's look at the soundboard. We couldn't do it. Um, and secondly, since we have a uh, representative of law enforcement here, twice since I've lived here, once during the drive-in movies, which some of you are on the Common Council, remember that movie that was played, and it led to them saying, hey, you can't play sound for the movies through the speakers. There was abundance, and I'm being polite, of profanities, racist language. And that was then. And then last summer, profanities and racist language, again, broadcast through our neighborhood where there were kids playing outside. I'm wondering from law enforcement perspective is when you give a permit for sound, do you get permit to broadcast profanities and racist language through neighborhoods, through residential neighborhoods? Is that part of the permitting process? Because that's what's happened twice. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring it up because I think no one would believe it would happen. So um, I guess I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Milwaukee County Supervisor Kathleen Vincent from Greendale. Uh, representing District 11. Um, I do appreciate that you guys are continuing to have these conversations. I would like to speak on behalf of some of the residents that are affected from District 11. As you know, this has been going on for, as many people have said, 10 years. This is the beginning of my second term as a county supervisor. I would really like to see some sort of solution to this problem um, for all of the residents that are affected on both sides, uh, you know, Franklin as well as Greendale. Um, we, we have had to use resources not only in the village of Greendale for this facility, but also Milwaukee County. I've been in touch with the uh, Sheriff's Department. So there are extra resources that um, this venue is actually costing taxpayers. And so I'm not sure to what degree you have the power or authority.
authority as a as a city council, but I, I believe they should be held accountable for the resources that the county and the village of Greendale and as well as you, the uh, city of Franklin, you guys are putting in all of these resources to a venue that's making millions of dollars. And I guess my, my concern about that is that um, this ha has been going on for such a time. I've heard some uh, thoughtful discussion here tonight, but there has to be solutions to this. Um, I personally walked to the entire H section, which is right on the other side, the north side of um, the rock, and uh, the northeast side of the rock, um, to every door to let the residents know that this sound study was taking place. But as was mentioned before, the rock did not cooperate and allow and I would hope that the city of Franklin could hold this venue since they are working with you, I believe, through a TID or a TIF. I don't know the difference. But, but you know, the important thing is that they need to be good neighbors. Um, I would like to be somewhere else. I was actually supposed to be somewhere else at another friends group meeting tonight. But I'm here once again in Franklin asking you guys to continue to try to press this issue and get a solution. I don't think another 10 years should go by. I don't think another two years should go by. And, and I do think you are trying to take some steps, but I hope it's not tiptoeing around an event venue that is being able to do things that other places maybe wouldn't be um, required to do. So I just ask that you continue to work with us. The Village of Greendale and Milwaukee County should not be paying extra to have extra uh, resources at this venue site, um, you know, without some sort of compensation from this venue. So I just want to mention that. And thank you guys that you're continuing to have this conversation. Thanks. Thank you. Dana Gate 9011 West Hawthorne Lane. I'd appreciate extra time because I'm representing the neighborhood. Uh, a couple concerns regarding, uh, I understand Police Chief was talking about, um, and other people mentioned the necessity of sending out the police numerous times to verify a complaint. The resolution itself says that uh, complaints are not required to be filed to issue a citation or violation. It should be something, if the monitors are set up properly, it should be something that if there's a peak, and uh, Courtney, uh, Alderman Dave mentioned that there used to be an alert system that was supposed to be part of the system. That's in a letter from 2019, that there was an alert system that was supposed to be part of the system. So the IT department should set that up. And then the police department or anyone could look at it and see there's an alert and go see what, if it's an event going on, or if there's a Harley that went by at that time, whatever the situation is. So a person does not need to complain. We have filed over a thousand complaints. We do not need to file one more complaint to get this torture to stop, just to be very clear. And that's in the resolution. Um, in addition, I do have some information to give out to all of you regarding the PDD because it is very concerning and I appreciate the supervisors both admitting that the sound study is not what they intended. It's not, has the accuracy. It doesn't include numerous ordinances and codes that obviously apply to the rock. It doesn't mention the PDD anywhere in there. Um, it doesn't mention any UDO, which obviously all those would help establish the accuracy of the sound study. So it gives me grave concern. There are some really good points in there, but as far as their recommendations, uh, there's mention in there that there's no metric uh, for the city of Franklin. 15-31107 is literally the metric that establishes P1 district with um, um, administrator Hirsch said that the underlying zoning district is P1. P1 is listed in the PDD 27 times. That is the underlying zoning district, and that is what's 55 decibels. The underlying zoning district is 55 decibels, but the resolution indicates the receiving district, which would be our neighborhood, the parks, and Greendale, is 50 decibels during the day and 45 at night. That's what needs to be enforced. The 55 decibel underlying district is what, you know, you guys can establish that that is the that's the maximum decibel level. So during the permitting process, if you want to, you know, discuss what is allowable on the property, that's fine. But once it gets to the property line, it's 50 decibels all the time for everything, except fireworks. And you need to limit the number of fireworks, which is also in the sound study. And that helicopter candy drop shouldn't be eliminated altogether. Um, 
the sound study does indicate, and this is on page 237. I know John was asking for pages. It's the so section. Ms. Kent, yeah. So I'm just going to allow, I'm just going to say yeah. right now, you're at three minutes. Yes. And I understand you said you were the neighborhood representative, mm -hmm. but part of that under the, uh, I believe it's our chapter 19, something's got to be brought forth prior okay. to. So if, if you can make your points, which we, we've heard. Sure. If you want to bring forth, so we'll give you another, I think, I think we allow the other alderwoman another minute and a half or two minutes, so go ahead. Okay, so the sound study literally says what page that. Page again, I'm sorry. Uh, page 237. It's the last four pages of the sound study, and I certainly hope all of you read that because that was in the executive summary, and that's what Mr. Martinez pointed out should be read. I um, mean, it literally says the sound study monitoring documented various activities at the rock work which were clearly capable of as a result of their volume and nature to annoy irritate and disrupt the quiet enjoyment and disturb the sleep of residents of franklin and greendale uh, it continues on to say um, it, it documented the exceedance of the limits of the current and franklin greendale ordinances by the average sound levels which is uh, supervisor Loxton pointed out that is not what we asked for we asked for how loud it is not the average but how loud it is, which would be a peak decibel level. Um, and then as far as the time continuum or, or whatever is being discussed about having noise being continuous, the, the sound study indicated that the Franklin staff responsible for noise informant enforcement informed us that this practice is no longer in use that's when they were using the 30 continuous minutes and it says right here there there is no basis in the development agreement or in the um uh in the ordinance that allows for 30 continuous minutes but anyways it, it says uh, the franklin staff currently responsible for noise enforcement informed us that this practice is no longer in use and that any exceedance of the noise limits is now considered a violation without it needing to persist for any particular length of time so that's what we need to endorse that's what is required um the pdd inc well we got about you ma'am you got we got to finish this up we have okay minutes. sure there's Here's the chart, I'll hand this out to everybody, that says what the decibel level is for P1 and for the residential districts. I have concerns that there's correspondence between the planning staff and the executive director of the Rock, a charitable foundation, that legislatively removed following the Exhibit C agreement in the county agreement. I'm not sure how that's possible. And then they also went so far as to establish new decibel levels. Um, this was something the planning staff did. This is legislative action that should have required common council approval. Um, here's a letter um, from staff that's indicating that there's certain ordinances and uh, codes that need to be followed. So there's a contrast between the planning department's same staff sending different information regarding um, decibel levels and noise regulations at the city. I would really like a copy of that summary. I think that should be a public document. Right, it's six. We got to shut it down. I think that should be a public document for people to see what is being proposed because at the August 2023 meeting, the Rock Sports Complex informed us that they're working on the umbrella bar dedicated sound system, which was required by the county contracts to be finalized and constructed by November 2018. So in the August meeting, they said they were working on it. Here we are. How many months later? So the excuses need to end immediately. I'm going to give everyone a copy of the PDD because I'm not sure you all have it, and a copy yeah. of those letters that I just mentioned. Thank you. They should be in the next. You, they should be in the next. Um, they should be in the next uh, packet for if it's a common council or a committee of whole. They need to be included. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak at this time? Once. Twice. Uh, we'll close that. We have a motion to go back into a uh, regular session. So move. Second. First and second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I have it. We are now back in regular session. And if we, uh, if there's any wishing to comment or respond back to uh, some of the comments made, that's now is a perfect time to do so. Thank you, Dana. Uh, Mr. Holtfer, and then Madam Director of Administration, and Snacks. I, I would just say that I was disappointed in the fact that the operator didn't cooperate with uh, allowing access to their facility for the sound study and given all of the issues concerns and things that we're talking about today and, and going forward 
Um, I guess I would look at, at uh, page 87 of the report, Facility Design Improvements. It states uh, under Franklin State Field Stadium, two methods of reducing community sound exposure from the existing stadium sound system would be turn the amplification volume down or focus the existing speakers away from sound sensitive areas. So they, rather than turning the volume down, opted to spend time, energy, and money redirecting speakers that we don't know yet if that's the final answer or not. I do know that when the Economwalk Stadium was having their sound work done, they were recommended the easiest thing to do would be turn the volume down. So I guess I would just reach out and ask the operator to please turn the volume down. Uh, yes, uh, Alderman Holford, and I think there's a term and it escapes me right now. It's limiter. sound limiter. So that's part of this, and the, the, the gentleman that's here from Rock obviously is a sound uh, an expert on this. this is what his uh, livelihood was prior to joining uh, the organization, and that sound limiter would address that directly because during that those checks, that's how that would set that base, and that baseline would be set. You cannot go over that baseline, and that's something that would be done before every event, and I think that would curtail a lot of this concern and situation. All the women day. Thank you. Um, I have one question about one of the, the comments from um, a resident. I believe it was Mr. Kerner um, speaking about the berm. I didn't know since if the city engineer here had any updates on that or um, the city administrator with any of the conversations you've had with the developer on that. Are you orange? Um, yeah, we've, we've uh, um, been progressing. I should say, with discussions with the Burt Rock. Uh, we had a meeting last Monday, I believe, and basically said, you know, we need to keep seeing progress. I understood that they were going to schedule a neighborhood meeting, I believe, the week of the 22nd. I haven't heard a date and time yet. We were, I promised that we would find a, a room here at City Hall or a library or somewhere here on the campus to have that meeting. Um, and then by the middle of May, I believe it was May 15 was the deadline I gave them to to show me a proposal on what they plan to do. And I believe the intent was is whatever that proposal would be would be as a result of the neighborhood meeting. So I have not heard of a date. Has that date been set yet? No. So um, if, uh, if I don't receive, you know, a, a proposal by May 15, then th th I've, been, I've told him that a citation is forthcoming. Thank you. And yeah, then I'm gonna kind of, Madam Director of Administration. I just wanted to um, state regarding staff, um, get a little protective, and the staff has never, nor do they now, have the ability to unilaterally send out documents without either the mayor's approval or the council's approval. So if something was not approved by the council, something was approved by the mayor staff is never going out of their way to develop a letter and then send it out that's accurate uh alderman eichmann did you say i just wanted to say i am aware i did say it backwards as far as park view road i'm quite aware that it is to the north of the rack not to the south i think that was in some misconception of the sound monitor placed on Parkview Road was facing south towards the rack. So I apologize. Somewhere in here, and I'll probably find it right after the meeting ends, it does state Parkview Road is to the south, unless there was the confusion with the south monitor. Um, if we look at page 203, I guess my question here is the sound monitoring is on the premises at the rack. The pictures here clearly state that. <laughs> so when it stated that the sound monitoring was not allowed on the rack premises, we've got evidence right here of sound monitors that are on the rack premises. And page 203. So with that, I'll yield. Are you referring to my comment? Uh, Alderman Holfer, you got Just in general that they were stating that for the sound study, monitors weren't allowed, which is the, under the impression that I was 
under as well, but then we have pictures and evidence right here on page 203 that there are monitors for the ski hill site anyway, on premises of the rock. My comment was that Roman Hofer. the people from the sound study were not allowed access to the site. Then why do we have pictures All the one I can. from the rock right here? I understand what you're saying, I respect that. It was more to, towards one of the residents' comments, actually, and it wasn't towards yours. However, so please address your comments to me, then we'll just instead of I'm back and clearly forth. stating that at some point in time, I'm seeing that they must have been allowed on the premises of the rack due to the pictures you're seeing on the right two on page so I'm two. Just looking for clarification because I, I also personally thought they weren't allowed, but we have pictures here they were allowed. So, again, it just the inaccuracy of the sound study and as a whole, I don't have confidence in, but that'll yield, uh, Alderman Holfer. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Barber, just hold one second. I just want to address something about the, the berm meeting. Uh, we are, the, like the city engineer said, we are working with the developer to have a meeting regarding the berm, uh, a community meeting to bring to bite the neighborhood and talk about the options and solutions and so forth and challenges. And that's to be done. I thought we we're still looking at around that 22nd of April ish uh, to have something move forward with that. So we're trying to, when, when that comes out, all of which uh, we'll notify, of course, uh, Ms. Gint will be the lead note person that we tell right away. Uh, and that way we can get the, meet. We'll put, we're gonna put a notice out there, but we're gonna call right away just to make sure that that is communicated properly and nobody is missed and we can uh, get that part. Mr. Barber. Um, obviously there are some things that are, are questionable about the sound study. I think that is kind of taking away from the major issue right now. The sound study was done a while back. I am equally disappointed that we weren't allowed on site. Uh, so that is, is part of the uh, shortcoming of the study. But we still have major issues and we still have things that we have to decide probably within a month or two right now. And uh, I don't care whether there's a, a period missing or a, a address. I want to see us move forward with action that's going to satisfy all the concerns that have been raised. So um, whether or not it's there or not, we have to move forward with where we're going with it. So um, mm -hmm. I'd like to know about the berm. I think that was, in my estimation, that was illegally filled in with landfill from the hotels. And that is a violation and why it's taken this long to come to this point. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But there was a berm there, and then out of expediency, it was filled back in without anybody's permission. Uh, and that is part of the problem that exists right now, so that there have been violations that we have not followed up on. Um, Mr. Engineer? So just to clarify, we did talk to the developer about, you know, we tried to be as open as we could as far as all the options. One of the options is to remove the fill. One of the options is to raise the berm. Another option is to place a wall on top of the berm. And there's also, regardless, the, a lot of the landscaping has died that was previously approved. So um, they went to a planning commission probably a year ago. I don't remember the exact date. And it was uh, denied. So that's uh, that, that took that off the table. So. Uh, as far as this neighborhood meeting, I believe that's that's what the concern is. There's a there's a concern about raising the berm because that would that would widen the footprint, which would cover up some of the gas extraction system. So that's probably off the table. But that, would, in my mind, that's still an option. Um, and also remove the the fill that was put there, and I believe it was placed there because of the uh, the golf um, facility. Um, I understand that's extremely expensive, and that's again that's their their call. So. I think probably is a wall is what they're going to propose, but again, it's it's a discussion on the on the neighborhoods, what they would be willing to see and and how it might be screened and so forth. So, I'm hoping after, I'm hoping as of May 15, I'll see a proposal and we can uh, discuss that at Planning Commission. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on this? Next steps. <clears throat> Well, there's there's quite a few moving parts and quite a few next steps, but uh, I believe the direction was given. I think it's we're we're pretty clear on where we've got to go with uh, 
the, the very aggressive timeline about getting the monitors set up and online. And what I think we'll do is probably bring something back uh, opposed to having, because next committee, the whole meeting wouldn't be until May, and I don't want to have a special meeting. But I think I would like to bring back some changes and updates. But I'm going to hold on that for a second, Mr. City Attorney. Administration. Um, I just wanted to address a, a couple of comments also that were made about our IT, just so that everybody's on the same page. Our IT department does not deal in sound. Um, our IT department is very limited in staff, and we have a lot of IT issues that have to be dealt with on a daily basis. So that's not in scope for them to do any sort of sound-related um, issue. They have been helping as they are available and to the extent of, um, you know, what they're able to figure out, but they're not experts. So if we're talking about tasking our IT department of two people with some sort of sound thing, that's not realistic. We have to look at bringing in actual sound experts and then figuring it out from there, not tasking our two people. Um, who are already overburdened and and working way too much on matters that fall within their purview. My reference to having IT was to have it put on our website and put in, and, and that if we are not going to have them do it, which that was my original understanding, and if it's going to move a different direction, we're going to move it at a very, very, very quick pace to find out who's going to be doing that. We're okay with doing that. Okay. We can that manage that. that. Yeah, no, but I just, uh, um, I believe there was a citizen comment about having the the IT department handle the any audio related piece. It just, it doesn't fall into scope is what I'm trying to say, just to set the expectation. Uh, Alderman Barber. I guess I'd like to see us resolve the issues between what is in the UDO and the, the um, ordinances existing so that we can get it into the licensing documents and we can be very clear about what the limits are going to be for any future uh, events that come up so my, my thought is I'd like to have you know maybe some time spent on just resolving those two issues and coming up with what uh, we think is best given the circumstances that are out there so I, I would like to see that addressed as soon as possible Okay, uh, Madam Director, are you clear on that? No. Because <laughs> I, I, I wasn't exactly clear. Yeah, about I'm not. It's, where do you want with this? Hold on. I need to make a motion to suspend sure. the rules. I may, I'll make the motion to suspend the rules Second. to allow the former alder. Woman All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Motion carries. Alder woman. Welcome. I have to be very careful with grandfathering items. I looked at your new UDO that you asked me to sit on the task force on almost like the first page or so it talks about when you do change things that are going to affect a operator they can be grandfathered you have enough things in that resolution that you adopted if you follow those even without the monitors you're going to have conditional permits to put in there which can monitor times dates put fees that's where your power is going to be You've got a wide open power without changing your ordinance and getting into this, well, now you changed the rules on us. So be very careful on what rules you do change. Straightening things out is one thing. Clarity is one thing. This whole 79 that everything's set at 79 is a big problem. Everybody needs to stop using the 79. It doesn't exist. It never has. It's been pushed for some reason. And that's what's gotten you here. Thank you for Thank you. Motion to go back in regular motion. Session. I'm making a motion. Second. First and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Alderman Eichmann. Thank you, Mayor. To Alderman <clears throat> Barber's remarks, I do agree with what was said in a perfect grill, but a week from tonight we'll be up here approving all the events that have been submitted from fireworks, maybe extraordinary not. events. Maybe so, not. Yeah, maybe so. And I guess next Tuesday we'll tell. But to get all that done within a week, I think is asking a lot. And city staff, well, I do agree with you. It's just a week from tonight. I just want to be clear that that's all going to be on the agenda. To my understanding. <clears throat> uh, Madam Director, Administration. 
I guess I, I need further clarification because I felt that the resolution and the um, temporary use application and permitting and putting all of that information out there, fleshing it out, was the direction that everybody needed. A sh shy of that, it, it sounds like we need an actual, um, somebody to bring in some sort of policy that um, I think might, I don't know, because I, I everything to um, former older, older woman Wilhelm's point, it's all there and it's always based on the Common Council's conditional approval. I mean, you always have that right to set conditions. Um, so I don't believe that there is any sort of code that needs to be redone. I don't believe that there's any sort of um, permit application, what have you, shy of the giving us more time. Um, that really needs to be reworked. It just needs to be fleshed out amongst all of you and then agreed upon per permit and um, just clarified to police chief and myself on how those violations will end up being processed if there are violations. Alderman Barber, anything on that? There's still going to be ambiguity about whether it's 79, it's been out there no, far enough. I mean, I, I, I agree with you, mm -hmm. but I think we need to make a statement that that is out the door. That has to be a council you know, decision to say that that is no longer in effect. And these are the new rules that, that are going to be, or have, are in effect currently. They're not new. But that is our, going to be our stance on the whole issue. And that's, that's where it comes as a statement within the licensing process itself. So that awareness is there. And it is fully stated as conditional upon any approval that we would give or that we would even move forward at this point. And to, and to add to that, Mr. Barber's point, uh, you at the council level can dictate and set forth whatever rules, guidelines, demands you wish uh, that you see fit as a council. Per, per permit, per licensing per, or per. application, um, per ask, basically. But, okay, so would it be fair to state that you're looking for maybe a memo to people that really clearly states there is no 79 decibels that um, there's no, not a blanket 79 decibel. It is per permit use and approval. That, that makes sense. Yeah. And, and the fact that it's going to be showing up in print mm -hmm. in the document. I think there's, there's one person, The Rock, will like to say 79. They've done it in the past. They've tried to legislate that without, you know, an approval that was made. Or, so I Please. think we have to be clear. I think we have to be clear to what the, the 79 was because of people have been promoting that as the limit and it's not. And we have to put that to bed finally. And, and I, I think uh, to Madam Director of Administration's point, I think a outlined memo uh, would clarify those points and then still allows the council you to act as you see fit all the day. Uh, yeah, and just um, another point of clarity that to, to consider if we are drafting um, some sort of, of memo um, to kind of succinctly explain, um, you know, what, what it is that we are, we are doing is to also include um, the, the sound at the property line, um, because I think that has also been a misconception um, across the board of, you know, if the event is permitted, to be at a higher level within the premises, that doesn't mean that it can bleed over into the neighborhood at that level. And so I think um, a clear delineation of that, whatever that is mm -hmm. um, for that zone should also be um, something that is called out so that it's, you know, people don't have to flip through seven documents to find that, that it's in one, one place. Sure, yeah. So I can work on a statement that brings all of these details out and puts to rest forever all of the misconceptions and misinformation. Yeah. It just takes away kind of the, the choose your own adventure novel of the tracking down which, which ordinance, which version of the PDD, which whatever. I mean, it just, here, he, this is current as of right now. This is right. be helpful. Right. 
and I understand the frustration with how things have been handled. Um, I don't. I don't think many of us can speak to that because many of us weren't here. But we are trying to fix this, and um, and it is important to to our collective group to find a solution that that truly works. So, um, you know, again, for for myself, for the mayor, we've tried to go back to what's on the books, and because I firmly believe that what was put out there was put out there for a reason. It was um, thought through. We just need to apply that. And I think that that's you know, what we were doing with the resolution and what we were doing with walking through the process of permitting and applications. Uh, Alderman Eichmann and then Alderman Barber. Thank you, Mayor. You know, in this sound study also mentions wind gusts, speeds, precipitation, thunder, noise going down 76th Street, whether a car backfires or a loud exhaust on a vehicle, a loud Harley, and there's so many factors that play in to the decimal decibel level with, you know, with those extraordinary, I'm sorry, I'm talking as an older woman sitting up here, thank you, as far as those extra noises that go in, I think we need something to be clear on that. There's so many different factors. Mayor, as you and I have discussed, there's been several times where we've been on the phone and I can tell you the exact score of the Milkman game depending on how the wind is blowing. There's other times I don't even know a game is going on. Now, granted, that is across the street, as everyone is aware, which is much different than if my backyard faced the rock. However, you know, how the wind travels. There's days that residents in D5 can hear a little bit of noise travel over. There's days they can't. It, a lot of that depends on the weather, and I just don't know the perfect answer and how we can control that. But that I'll yield for right now. Okay, Alvin Barber, then. Madam That's Director. where the property line configuration comes in. I mean, a lot of that would be at the property line where it's measured. Um, a motorcycle going down 76 is not going to affect someone waking up in the middle of the night or kids not going to sleep at night. So, I mean, I think all of that is a factor, but we got property line <laughs> issues, we got inside the stadium issues, we've got, we get, we can set limits. Um, I like the 45 days because it's going to give us time to react with the vendor and if we want to change something in it, we don't have to approve it that night, which has been the case in the past where it comes to us the week before. So I'm, I'm thinking it's a new ball game in terms of licensing and what gets approved on any given night and what gets reworded and sent back as, as a, an option. So I think we're going to be looking at that very, very strategically. Uh, moving forward with any kind of an approval. Uh, Madam Director, then Alderman Ica. I just, um, <clears throat> regarding the, the sound levels, I, I just wanted to kind of take it more basic and say, why don't we try to put it at what it's supposed to be at and see how that goes. And, um, you know, I know that there's been citizens that have made comments about being in the venue and we've had conversations amongst ourselves that it is too loud it's uncomfortably loud so mm -hmm. um, maybe if it if we tried to bring it down to the level that it's supposed to be at and see how that works that just might be a novel idea this um, other <coughs> woman I then I'd like to chime in something thank you mayor again I want to sound like a broken record with the 45 days Alderman Barber but we have the applicants for several events for the summer already here that are going to be, to my understanding, a week from, on a week from tonight's agenda. So that 45, year, 45 days is great, and I agree and support that, but that's not gonna help, I guess, until next year, because we already have a, a, a majority of those events. Some of those are out in the future beyond that time. Yes. Right. To prove something that night. <clears throat> got that time frame. So hold on, you still got the floor. With that, I'll yield right now. So one comment I just would like to chime in on, that was the sound monitor that's the closest one to South 76th Street. And that's where I know we've talked, and I've talked uh, with the sound, so-called, with, with the experts. So, and then that's the toughest part is that sound monitor, what that picks up. And that's a big concern 
of the of the no, the normal just ambient noise of that street and where that would where that would come in and how would that be dealt with not that all of a sudden in the PD you're it, it's showing some loudness and slowing level and that's and that's just something it's just a point I'm making it's a point I'm making Dana a point Madam director um, my understanding is to date or at least with the, the sound system monitoring that's already in play, you can click on the sound clips and you can hear what the sound is attributed to. Um, and then I also just wanted to, to state so that it's clear, we now understand that we are being directed to change the, um, the permits and that will in effect change our municipal code and everything that, that the permits touch from 30 working days to 45 days. However, that change has not occurred yet. And that and your body here has to approve that. So I just wanted to go on record. So I know that you're concerned about what's been turned in right now. It would not be applicable to it until we actually have it approved and in place. Uh, Alderman Holfer. Thank you. Um, to that point, when it, that should come to the council so we mm -hmm. can make that change. Right. And under process of review, it says that uh, the, the council which shall review, approve, conditionally approve, or deny the license within 20 working days. That would also change to calendar days as opposed to working days, or to keep, keep the language consistent with. Is, is that what the council would like? We'd have to vote on that. We can't vote tonight. Okay. 121-9J. I'm sorry, can you get that to me again? 121-9J. Thank you. It's under process of review. All the to the floor. Yield. And, and to your point, uh, <coughs> yes, I, th I think it would make the most sense to go just strictly with calendar days. That just makes the most sense. All the one I can. Absolutely. Thank you. Mayor, I feel like a lot of this we're spinning just in circles again of things that have been discussed, things that I've attending meetings and listening to meetings for the past decade have heard. Many have seen me sit at meetings long before I ever ran as an alder. But so to get some clarification and some, some simplicity to all of this would be wonderful for all those involved. But I just wanted to mention the changes that have already occurred that we're not touching base on. I realize that we did get that printout from the city administrator, but we received that as alders, not those that are here tonight and those listening at home don't are not aware of. So as to my understanding, they have turned the speaker in the parking lot inward towards the ballpark and that they're working on a different sound system up at the umbrella bar. I just want to bring some positivity into this of things that have been discussed and changes that have been made. If we can you know, talk mm -hmm. about that for a little bit. I mean, it's a great start with the developer to at least be making these changes that many have asked for for several years. So with that, I'll yield. So what are you, are you saying right now? You want to discuss what the developer, I mean, I don't have it in front of me. So I mean, I, I mean, yes, were there have been steps? Absolutely, there's been steps. Is there, have there been productive meetings with productive direction to move forward? Yes, there have. Um, you know, this is, I, you know, I'm not gonna put the gentleman on the spot, but he's here and we've had great meetings with him and uh, I think we're going in the right direction. Is it taken much longer than anticipated? Yes, but we're moving in the right direction. I'm not gonna go into the details of that document. Uh, Madam Clerk, what are you? I Thinking. just want some direction on, we have received some extraordinary entertainment and special mm -hmm. um, event applications, which all of you have received by email. Um, am I processing them the way I normally would? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're processing them according to the document that I provided. There's a historical and then there's a moving forward how it should have been. And then there's notes. I emailed this to you and Katie. Um, prior to the election, but I can provide it again. Yeah, it was a. I'm sure I have it. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I was just going to ask. Okay, why don't we go with Alderman? We're not going to have. We're not going to do the yelling thing. So Alderman Holfer. Uh, that's what you said. 
you reference a document that was sent, is it different than what the resolution we passed? It brings it down into scope and addresses each of those um, those questions that the developer had that are specific to their events. So no, it's not in the ordinance because the ordinance is supposed to be a all encompassing and or I'm sorry, the resolution and I, the resolution doesn't change anything. I mean, this is just a call to everything that's existing to summarize that. The document that I put together that has application permits and um, historical and moving forward and the notes that I just referenced, that is specific to this developer and the, the applications that they have put forward in the past and how those should be handled and um, notated as to where that information is coming from. I would like to make sure that the clerk has direction to move forward as our ordinances state, not per an ad hoc memo for the one particular. I, I, I think you're missing um, my point. It just is a, it's the ordinance itself. I mean, it's the municipal code. It's already in our, our municipal code. It's making it easier for them to determine which way to process each one. I'm not changing anything. It is just making this whole process easier because per the resolution, I've gone through and pulled out all of the things that we should be doing, all of the, the ordinances that exist and our laws that we should be following. This is no different. Okay, thanks for the clarification. You're welcome. Yield? Yes. All right, uh, Alderman Barber. It, it might just be helpful if we could see that document. Yeah, absolutely, I can do that. To know what the guidelines right. are. Right. So. And, and just so you know, so I had provided the document to our, um, our representative at the establishment and also the clerk's office, um, well, to the clerk and then our permit coordinator. However, they've both been very busy with the election and, um, and what have you. But yeah, absolutely, I'm happy to send that. And within, so there's a document that summarizes it and puts it really um, very clear. It's, you know, for example, candy drop, okay? And then what that should fall under if, if um, that were to go forward. Um, the concerts, all of those, which document should be completed, temporary use, um, special event, what have you. That's how it's outlined. And then it references the chapters and I've included the chapters in there so that people can see I'm not creating this from out of nowhere. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that, you know, for, for those that want to see the, the, yes, the reference to it and the, the research that's been done, it's just to make it easier for clerk's office and others to understand the process. And, and it's for the clerk's office, but also for the developer, because we've had a lot of questions come forward that when we initially got the questions, we were all just kind of like, we're not really sure how this process is supposed to be handled now, given the fact that we know there were ordinances that were not being enforced in the past. So, you know, we're not sure that how things have been done is necessarily well vetted. So that's why this is, that document exists. Very helpful. Uh, all the minutes on the floor. I yield. All the icon. I yield. I was hoping for more clarification on things at this meeting tonight, but I understand with the election recently and everyone's incredibly busy, but I just was hoping that we would all walk out of here with a little bit more clarity, but it is a work in progress and that's something positive to look forward to as we move forward with this all. That I'll yield. Uh, all the women day. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to state that um, the resolution that was put forward and this document that I will happily hand to all of you um, is that clarity that I felt was requested as being requested and um, you know our, our path forward based upon what we have right now and until or unless we change any of our codes. 
Alderman Day. Uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, just um, from my my experience as um, city staff as well as um, my year um, up in this role, I I can safely say I think this is. Well, some of the audience may disagree. The the most cohesive I think this particular body and staff have been in working forward on on a resolution for this. So I'm actually very encouraged with where we are right now, even though it may not seem like we accomplished a lot tonight. I think I think in fact we did. Um, I just want to go over my notes, um, kind of of some of the things that are hanging out there, just to see if I am following this correctly. Um, so it sounds as though. Um, May f around May 1st is a, a deadline or a date that was given by the developer to potentially have um, the sound monitor piece at least turned over to us. We may not be there IT wise yet, whether it's our IT or, or, or some other party having it functional and flipped on per se, but May 1st is the, the timeline for the developer to have their part of that process handed to us. Would you like me to clarify um, Do that each question? Minutes. Okay. Yeah. So yes. There's been dates thrown on so right. I don't want people to be stuck on a date and have something happen or not happen. So currently we are pending a signed agreement with the company that does the sound monitoring. Once the developer signs that agreement, we will be able to put access to those sound monitors through the city's website and have it online available to everybody. Um, the date that the developer provided was May 1st. Okay, and that same May 1st date approximately is the target date they're looking for for the speakers for the umbrella bar to be somewhat maybe operate somewhere, no. No. Don't use May 1st as a date, even though that, no May 1st. Uh, it would be prior to the start of the Mr. I, thank you, Alderwoman. Um, so, Mr. If you if you wish to, I don't want to put you in, but if you wish to make a comment on some of these things, you're more than welcome to join the table, name and business address if you wish. But I don't want to do this. This, if not, we can get you can get the information to Man Director Administration. She can then share it with Council. How about that? Like I said, I, I'm just with dates thrown out there. I want to make sure that we're crystal clear. Everybody up here, everybody in the audience, everyone listening at home, what the expectation is, so that a date doesn't come and pass, and something is expected to have happened and it didn't happen. So I want expectations to be um, as, as clear as possible. Um, so hope the the goal. I should restate the goal will be for those speakers to be up and operational and checked for um, decibel appropriate decibel limits before the start of an umbrella bar concert series is what we're hoping. Um, it, it sounds as though the goal is that the speakers that were required for the umbrella bar um, will be operational before the start of the concert series is what I was hearing this evening is a target date. <clears throat> I can't answer that. Um, what I can say is our discussions have only have only encompassed are you going to have a dedicated sound system or not? So we weren't looking at answering the by date, but certainly we will determine, um, you know, work with the developer and determine what, what that realistic date is for them. Um, for the sound monitoring, the date that we were we had received was May first for having the the contract in um, having the contract signed, and my understanding is the calibration has already occurred. Um, so, you know, that's that's pretty much the information I have in terms of the monitoring piece. Okay. And if there's things, older woman, that we aren't going to be able to answer tonight. We'll get the answer from the developer. Mm -hmm. That'll be shared uh, in an extremely timely fashion. Okay. Yep, for sure. Um, and then um, reiterating um, the berm uh, proposal um, is that the goal is to have a neighborhood meeting at some point in April between the developer and the city and those residents or city members that are interested, with then a deadline set by city staff of May 15th for the developer to have a plan on what they want to do. 
Correct-ish. So um, the developer is going to be reaching out to the neighborhood to sit down and discuss what they would like to see in terms of an answer to the berm. And that meeting is said to uh, take place sometime in the week of the 22nd of, of April. And then, yes, city staff has set the deadline for a proposal of some sort just, you know, to show progress forward of May 15th. And then the only, the last thing that I have that is out, that is outlined on, on my list that is of concern to me given um, the potential to be reviewing uh, special <coughs> event applications next week um, is how we're going to um, define the violation and the threshold. You know, the, is it is it time? Is it number of occurrences? Um, because I think that's something that, if licenses were to be were to be approved, not saying they are, if licenses were to be approved and they were to be approved with a condition, I suspect that that might be a condition that would want to be in there. So that's something I think that we need to look at, whomever that is, whether that's you know, police, city administrator, planning you know, whomever, but I think that's something we didn't answer to as soon as possible. Right, and and so right now it would be anything, it, there's no time limit on any of the noise violations, right? So it's not a, a half an hour or five minutes or what have you. Um, if you wanted to make restrictions or add changes to that to a permit, you, as the body of the council, have every right to determine that per permit or, um, you know, obviously we can make that determination and have that updated in our codes for a blanket change. But that right now, there is no time frame on it. So any violation is a violation. It's not any violation at 30 minutes is a violation. And that's another misconception and practice that was in, in place until we went back to our ordinances and, and just getting the information from the source is yeah. very helpful. And I would argue saying that on record clearly right now, I think is, is all we need. Thank you for that. I yield. Okay. Thank you. Alderwoman Eichmann. Thank you, Mayor. I ask please that as a reminder, when these meetings are held, even in regards to the berm, if you wouldn't mind, if you could please include all of us alders in on it, as well as the two county supervisors that are present, for those of us that may be able to attend or want to attend, is an option with a backing notice on it, just so we're all away, made aware of things and so forth. You're staring at me. I don't do notices, so I'm not sure who who would be doing that. I I don't send out any meeting. Um, Mr. Glenn, uh, Mr. City Engineer, any moral? Oh, sorry. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> All right. So I, I did talk to the developer and and offered to find a room and we can work with the clerk's office to put the bad notice on it. And maybe even this room where we can broadcast on YouTube if it, that interests you. Thank you. Yes. And to include the two county supervisors. Also, just real quick for those listening and so forth, who is paying for the sound monitoring system? That's the developer. And do we have a contract with that developer on this signed? And the contract would be with the organization that is doing the sound monitoring. And to my knowledge, that is the holdup. We don't have a signed contract. We've been told that we will have a signed contract. First pitch is what? I know the calendar. May 10th. Out. May 10th. So that was Can't, ideally. Cannot do anything. I know that um, Alder Women Day had referenced the summer concert series. I was on the scope of we were trying to get everything complete by the day of opening day for the milkman, which is exciting. But and I understand things take time, so I'm just making that statement that it, I mean we're down to well, just a few weeks now, unfortunately. Duly noted. Also, we have no control over that. I understand. Just, I, I just want to put that out there. It's oh, yeah. not, we're not dragging our feet. No, I understand, and I appreciate the immense time and hours that you and city staff have spent on all of this, too. So I wanted to add that, and that I'll yield. Thank you. Alderman Barber. One of the comments that came out uh, during our citizen comment opened up uh, period was the placement of the monitors. 
uh, having some issues with that. Where does that come into play or where does that get addressed in the process of the, the monitors uh, strategically placing them maybe to better advantage or where the uh, residents would like to see it? Does that come into play anywhere or is that um, something that okay. can be? So when dealing with the, uh, the, the vendor where these are placed, were, was that already was done with some sound monitoring company and if the cell monitoring company wishes to make that recommendation to change, there's obviously a cost with it. But if they're if these are placed where they're at and they're going to currently and they are accurate and they are to the best of the ability to accurately measure sound, the the, the thing is, I know Alderman Holford brought this up as well. We'd like to have a, a sound. Uh, engineering company come in we have to look for you know that's there's a cost with that and we can't just demand that someone else pay for it and cross our arms and say well if you don't do this we're gonna do that we're, we're trying to say you know, look uh, do we need to do they have to be moved uh we you know they're they're if they if they are willing and they say this is it and this is where we have a, a sound perhaps even a third party that says hey they're accurate where they are they're that's good but there is a cost to move them and you know this is i'm and this is just one of many pieces uh, to how this is done, but as long as they're accurate, they're accurate. If they're not, they've got to be moved. But the, I think the first part is the calibration and make sure they're set to go and, and also then put on the website. And they can always be moved further. I mean, that, once they're here now, if it's determined, I guess I'm looking at the, the almost like the, uh, the hierarchy. The first thing is that we got to get them up, running on our website. Then if we wish to have them moved, because you know, just like all the women Eichmann said, the, the, the clock's ticking. We all, we all, we're all hyper aware that May 10th is the first pitch. I mean, every time I go to sleep at night, it's, first pitch is May 10th. I fall asleep, I'm, and and it's just like we all know that. So, <laughs> right, <laughs> or try, but uh, but yeah, I mean, if, and that's something that that's going to come down, then that's fine. But right now, you know, I mean, I we all understand there's there's going to be. What's going to happen here, and then we, we're going to keep going. This is going to be getting improvements as it goes on, but just as the fear and back and fall, here we are. I mean, I, here we are. You still got the floor. I sir. understand that, and uh, I was just concerned that it was raised by a, a citizen, <coughs> and I think that has to be part of the, the in the back of our mind as we go forward with this and get all these other pieces put into place. Sure. That maybe that is something for, and I'm not sure why they felt that it was that. I wish I would have had more of an explanation as to why the person felt that those were not in the right area. But I think, like you said, it's down the road. Let's get let's get to where we need to let's, be. Let's get it up and going. I mean, and uh, that's my opinion. Hold on. Down. No, and director of administration. Oh, I said, and, and turn it down. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, anyone else before? We, oh, Mr. City Attorney. My thought on all of this was that the municipal ordinances would be all redone mm. <clears throat> instead of a you, spot here, spot there, spot here, spot there. So nothing has been redone? I know that. Are you referring to the permitting dates? Because that's the only recommended change. Sound. Right. So that's I'm I'm not making a recommended change. I am recommending following our ordinances as they should have been. Earlier this year, I understood the council approved an agreement mm -hmm. with the yep. Unified Development Ordinance Update Company to include updating the sound regulations, mm -hmm. even though that's also in the municipal code. Right. And my thought was that was going to be processed up front. And I've heard the comments with regard to the study, but I dare say in terms of decibels, you bring in recommended decibels per the sound study and have the process public hearing, et cetera, et cetera, and the basis for such an amendment. And there are statements by the developer 
operator that work is working with the city in terms of <clears throat> uh, the noise <laughs> levels. And so we, we all do this together and proceed on that. <clears throat> I thought that would be a main component of where this goes from here. I feel as though we need to lead with what's existing until we have those meetings with the the consultant that does the UDO rewrite and we have that task force meeting and involve those people and we get the feedback and we determine what is industry best standard for UDOs, you know, what should we be incorporating into it and then at that time my understanding is we would look for, let's say, you know, do a, a basic, I'm, I'm dumbing it down, I'm sure it's not this basic, but do a search in our municipal code where sound shows up and have all of those adjusted and not just necessarily revamp the municipal code. It's taken two years to revamp the, re, uh, the UDO rewrite, so I just, I'm a little weary of, um, of what exactly you're referring to but again you know i feel like we have the basis for how we should be moving forward now one one thought and i made a note with regard to 50 decibels because it's a p1 parks district underlying zoning district a planned development district is it's, its own zoning, zoning. District. right however in all of the documents that i've i've reviewed P1 is the zoning district that is identified and there are documents that explicitly state they will be held to those standards and those requirements. In the actual agreements, okay. Uh, I think it was the 2018 agreement. Okay, good. Thank you. And, and I do want to, you know, clarify that there is a lot of misconceptions that are, are out there. However, our standards in the UDO, our standards in the municipal code, they do exist in these documents. Um, and, and that was the whole point of trying to bring forth, hey, this is what the UDO says. Let's, let, and this is what our municipal code says. Let's just go back to the basics, go back to doing what is here until or unless we have something else. But I think that for the most part, this can be a, a working um, system, especially when you have the council allowed the, the discretion and the um, conditions that they can put on all of the, the permits. So that's a big point. Alderwoman Eichmann. All right, so just to reiterate, this won't happen overnight, not to be negative, but the odds of this all being complete by first pitch are slim to numb, strikeout, no pun intended. Um, well, as far as that UDO rewrite, I mean, as you mentioned, city administrator, it's been going on long before you were with us for well over two years. Do we know when that's ever going to be complete? <clears throat> Is there any, like, rough, I mean, I, don't, I hate to put you on the spot, and I apologize for that, but it's been going on for so long, that rewrite. Right. Well, and that's the main, one of the main reasons why I continually say, let's enforce what we have in terms of laws before we start to talk about and look towards changing them. Because I think if we actually enforce what we have, and now that it's been brought forth in a resolution and things are are very clear, at least I hope they're clearer, um, we start doing that, maybe other things, these ideas of change won't actually be required, right? There are a lot of, of pieces to this that have not been followed. I'm suggesting we go back, we follow our ordinances and, and see if there is a requirement to change. But to your question, to, to the other part of your question, the UDO rewrite is, um, I, I want to say that we have dates set through June. No, actually, it's further out. So we have dates set through August. There's all kinds of pieces. It's not just noise. Um, and what we want to ensure that we're doing is really getting all of 
the shareholders buy in and also their their concerns and that our UDO rewrite is addressing those concerns. So that does take time, you know, and, and that was part of, we had a, recently we had a meeting and we set all those dates out and um, the planning department did reach out to some of the, um, not some, but all of the, the residents that the mayor had requested be part of the UDO rewrite. So in my understanding is those dates have been confirmed and we are set to move forward. Um, obviously, we don't have a noise rewrite, and until we do, again, I just, I'm just i going to keep deferring to let's follow what we have and see how that works, because it appears to me from everything I've heard and seen, we haven't done that. So maybe if we did, we might be pleasantly surprised to find out that we don't really need to do anything else. I appreciate that and um, this positive news that there's some light at the end of the tunnel with that rewrite and all the work that's been gone that has um, been instilled into it. So thank you. With that, I yield. Alderman Holfer. Thank you. I would agree that we should proceed with what we have for the time being and mm -hmm. that the UDO update be sometime in the future. But most communities have a much more detailed and uh, comprehensive plan for how they monitor sound and, and you know it's different frequencies for different times because it's more than just the rock that we're talking about it could be the hum of a generator it could be something in an industrial area so uh, mm -hmm. it will benefit us down the road but I, I would agree that for the time being we can do as suggested yeah absolutely and I'm not you know I'm not opposed to making any changes we're obviously making those changes and we're moving forward um, my point is that it can't happen overnight, so we might as well use what we have in place. But, you know, again, as a council, as a, a governing body, you get to decide what those conditions are that you can put on each permit. And if it's not permitted, then it's 55. Agreed. Thank you. I yield. Uh, anyone else before we... Uh... There's no, we understand the pathway, and then we're going to, if there's no further discussion or comment, we one. Um, will that licensing correction Mr. Barber? or guidelines be brought up for the next council approval, next council meeting? I'm sorry, could you restate that? I, I interrupted you because I recognized you. Um, so. You said that we have to set the guidelines for the uh, uh, licensing committee, and that would have to be a council action. Would that be at the next council meeting? Are you referring to the 45 days or are you referring to approvals on um, permits? Um, approval on the permits, that's where you mentioned that would be a council action that would have to be establishing those guidelines? No, they can be, they can vary from permit to permit. That's, that's the authority of the council and then you would decide that when those um, those licenses are brought forward and what is it like item H or something? I wanted to make sure of that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You have that discretion every single license, every single council meeting. So what you decide on one doesn't necessarily have to be on the other. That's uh, specific. Um, woman, woman day. Did you have something? All the one I can. Real briefly, I went into then re Quest, if we're not already, for, as we are in licensing, approving those applications, if the applicant can please be present if possible. That way we can discuss and go over any changes with them that may be needed. That I'll yield. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on this at this point? We understand the direction. Is there a motion to adjourn? So I'll make move. Second. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I just have it. Motion carries. Off record 838. If you can shut us down, please. Recording stopped.